Greg Cook's theory is a very much a joint by joint approach. So you basically, if you start from the bottom, the joints alternate in terms of what they're supposed to do in the body between mobility and stability. So the ankles are supposed to be mobile, okay? The knees are supposed to be stable. The hips are supposed to be mobile. The low back is supposed to be stable. The mid back is supposed to be mobile. The scapula is supposed to be stable. And the shoulders are supposed to be mobile, okay? So just joint by joint, it alternates in terms of what everything is supposed to do, right? And so what happens if my hips aren't mobile? Well, something has to move when I'm playing ultimate, right? Something has to move when I'm doing a squat. So if my hips aren't mobile, the things that are going to move are the joints above and below. So if my hips can't move, that means my low back has to move. And if my low back's not moving, that means my knees have to move. None of these things are ideal for what we want to do, okay? So it's very important to look at these things as a unit, as they're happening, okay? So let's see. So here's an example. So um, in terms of, let's say you have an ankle problem, okay? So you're probably going to lose mobility in your ankle. So that means that when you land, instead of your ankle being mobile enough to absorb that force, your ankle is stuck. Maybe you, you put a brace on it, maybe you taped it up because it's hurting. You know, for whatever reason, whatever you did to, to compensate for your lack of ankle mobility, that means now the knee has to pick up the slack. The knee is not built to pick up the slack. So then you end up having someone with knee problems. So people will think, I have a knee problem. It's not really a knee problem. It's an ankle problem. And that's the, that's the basis, the underlying um, theory under which I'm working is that problems show up in the body and they're symptoms of the greater problem, which is poor movement. So we're still talking about mobility and stability here. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something that happens a lot with basketball players is they'll see them taped up like crazy, right? And basketball players have some of the highest incidence of uh, patellofemoral syndrome you know, pain in the knee and under the knee. And it's because they're not able to move their ankles. They've got so much tape on them, right? And they're not doing the proper mobility exercises to get that motion back to fully rehab it, then they have knee issues, okay? So another thing that um, we run into with movement is asymmetries, okay? Does everyone in this room know that ultimate is a very asymmetric sport? Yes. Please <laughs> tell me that you all know that ultimate is a very asymmetric sport. Okay. So we're good. I, I'm of the opinion that it's actually one of the most asymmetric sports. Um, again, MC and I, this is going to come up a lot. We talk a lot about movement. Go figure. Um, we're riffing about this. And he, we were kind of trying to come up with examples of other sports that were more asymmetric than ultimate. And we weren't really having much luck. Like, he kind of came up with tennis. And I was like, well, no, but you do, you know, you're two-handed on the rocket a lot of times, and you're, you're, you're lunging this way, and you're running and lunging this way, like, you're, you know, you are doing all of this stuff, and, and, and it's not, it's not really exactly the same. I mean, ultimate, you put one foot in the ground, and you lunge and pivot around that foot, and you throw with one arm. I mean, what's more asymmetric than that? So the issue, where that shows up, and where that really causes us problems, it's not necessarily that it's asymmetric here, but it's then, it's asymmetric there. We develop muscular things and joint issues to kind of compensate for that asymmetry. And then you try and run. Running should be very, very symmetrical. But it is not symmetrical if your body movement and your patterns are already asymmetrical. So you carry those asymmetries into your running. And that's where you get a lot of kind of chronic incidences of hamstring stuff, everything like that. So these asymmetries directly contribute to injuries on the field. Um, it also can cause core imbalance. You know, obviously if you're throwing and moving over only on one side, your core gets kind of out of whack, starts pulling on different parts of your body. Um, another theory that I work off of is that um, imbalances and issues manifest themselves kind of across the body. So there is this kind of zigzag that goes on. So not only are we kind of talking about joint stacking, but we're also saying, okay, 
if you have a problem with your right shoulder, if your right shoulder is immobile, it's going to show up with problems in your left core and your left hip. And if you have problems in your left core and your left hip, it's probably going to manifest with issues in your right knee. And it might even go all the way down to left ankle. So um, I'll use MC as an example here. He separated his shoulder in college, type 3 separation. So if you've ever seen him, his collarbone kind of sticks out like this. It's a little bit gross. I'm totally used to it by now. But um, so that's his throwing arm, right? So not only is it he, he's having to work extra hard on that arm, but he has an actual physical you know, malfunction <laughs> with the joint there. And so he correspondingly has a ton of issues with left core weakness and left hip imbalance. And he's had a lot of outer right knee, IT band issues and pain. So you can kind of map this and track this. So again, the problem you might feel is in your right knee, but the problem might actually be that your left hip and your left glute isn't firing properly. It might be that your right shoulder is overused and undermobile, you know? So that's another way that those things can show up. So then we're on to talking about the third aspect of this, which is uh, movement patterns.